subscribe and click the notification bell to stay updated with the latest videos from School of Technology Management and Engineering and MIMS in the Warm greetings to everyone present here. I'm Mohit Pathak on behalf of School of Technology Management and Engineering and MIMS in Daw would like to welcome you all to Atal Faculty Development Program. Hope you have enjoyed the previous session on basic Python programming for IoT. Before we start the session, I would like to inform you all that a feedback form will be floated in the chat box at the end of the session. So please fill necessary details correctly as attendance will be marked on the basis of the submission of feedback forms only. During the session, all of you can ask your queries by mentioning them in the chat box. The topic for today's session is interfacing sensors and Raspberry Pi with Python. Raspberry Pi has a wide range of applications ranging from integration to hosting on a simple board using Python and Scratch. It gets as complicated as it seems. So to assist you with the same, I would like to welcome our expert from the same domain. who will lead you through a hands-on session based on the Python skills you learned in the previous session. The session expert for today is Mr. Tushar V. Kute, who is currently working as a data scientist and researcher in MITU Research, Pune, and chief panel of editors and authors at Prakrut Prakashan, Pune. Sir has done B in computer engineering from COEP, University of Pune, ME in computer science and engineering from MIT, Aurangabad, and diploma in computer engineering from MSBT Mumbai. His areas of research include artificial intelligence, data science, machine learning, IoT, and many other vast fields. We are pleased to have you here with us, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So good afternoon all and welcome again for a new session connected with the first session that we have started with Python programming today. And uh, we have seen only basics of Python, uh, somewhere I highlighted which kind of concepts are required for IoT application design. Mm -hmm. For designing IoT application practically, we require some hardware kits, some uh, microcontroller based, some microprocessor based. Maybe if you heard about Raspberry Pi, so we'll talk about Raspberry Pi today. We'll have a little introduction to Raspberry Pi, its installation, its operating system, its coding, sensor interfacing, how to use the Raspberry Pi technically uh, from all the angles. So let's see uh, the Raspberry Pi first, and then we'll talk about uh, the IoT and Raspberry Pi's connection, how Raspberry Pi is beneficial for us to design the IoT application designs here. So just a minute, I'll show you. Okay, so uh, two, three sessions, two different presentations I'll be showing here in this session. Uh, first, we'll introduce with the Raspberry Pi. So you can see the symbol which is mentioned here, the logo of Raspberry Pi Foundation. <clears throat> and so it's a microprocessor based system uh, that will be used to design or will be used at a, as a computer basically. See, what is Raspberry Pi? Raspberry Pi is a series of small single board computers developed in UK by the Raspberry Pi Foundation to promote the teaching of basic computer science in schools and developing countries, basically. This is the main reason why the Raspberry Pi was created. Raspberry Pi Foundation was formed in 2004 somewhere and uh, in the United Kingdom and they were created in computer, small computer, basically. Okay, this one, you can see this. I I'll show you uh, completely. And the aim was to promote the teaching of basic computer science, how computer works, how to write the program for computer, how to handle and use the computers for developing countries. Okay, that was the aim of creation of this respective board there. And the original model became far more popular than anticipated and selling outside of its target market for users such as robotics. So today, in the field of robotics, in the field of automation, in the field of Internet of Things, embedded systems, we are having vast applications of Raspberry Pi in here. 
Now over 5 million Raspberry Pi has been sold before February 2015 and by 16, which is a single year country, 11 million units were sold and millions of Raspberry Pi are now available across uh, the world for different kind of application, not only for teaching the computer system, but for different sort of applications uh, like robotics and IoT as just, just I told. So Raspberry Pi is getting widely used, wide range of applications are now covered by the Raspberry Pi there. You can see the sale is growing exponentially almost. Yeah. <clears throat> so what is the Raspberry Pi? You can see the model which is shown over here. It's a uh, Raspberry Pi model B, <clears throat> 3 model B, actually current Raspberry Pi 4 is also available. Okay, uh, before that I'll show you their website. Let's check their official website. See this, this is Raspberry Pi's official website. So just posted in the chat box also. See. Currently, uh, Raspberry Pi, not many variants that they have created here today. See this. <clears throat> and for different, as it has, uh, it has become popular for IoT application design. So many variants that they have created, many versions that they have created there. See, Astro Pi, Mission Zero, that's how uh, they are working for astronomic operations there. See, this is Raspberry Pi Zero W. It's very small. It is there. Uh, its, its size is also less than uh, that of uh, uh, the uh, what, what you can say credit card. Okay, or uh, Arduino also. See this uh, official list of Raspberry Pi and uh, different kind of projects that they are working with the Raspberry Pi here. You can purchase it from here. Even not only that, you can purchase it from uh, their official website and. Different official sellers are also there in India. Uh, from there, you can you see you can read about us and uh, what exactly Raspberry Pi is currently having. You can see, you can see here. Okay. Many things are there. We'll talk about that. What exactly Raspberry Pi is basically used? It's a special kit which is used. Okay. And it works to promote, uh, as I told, uh, computing in the developing countries. That's the reason why they are used. And most of the donations that they are getting from different uh, NGOs also. And it's the reason why the cost of Raspberry Pi is very, very low. Okay. okay, so let's continue. Okay, I'll show you uh, the kit which is present with me. Okay, or one kit which is shown here on the slides. See. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about the structure architecture. So, because when you write the code of IoT application designs, we need to understand the detailed structure of it. So, see this Raspberry Pi 3 model B for all the versions, only model B is present. See, uh, for first, only model A and B was present. For 1, other 2B, 3B, 4B, all are there. What we'll talk about, what do you mean by B? Where the B name is given there, and where the A is present, that also we'll see. See what exactly a computer require. Computer requires the same things are present on this board. Computer motherboard is containing that abilities are given and available here in this particular kit. You can see this. I think uh, it's highlighted. You can see this is my Raspberry Pi. This one, okay, and on this particular board. On this particular board, many things, utilities are present. Uh, here on the top, you can see uh, Raspberry Pi version is mentioned. Okay, uh, see, on this also we can identify the kit is available. Here you can find made in mention. So original kit, this is the original kit, the diagram, or uh, sorry, the picture we shown over is not original. It is uh, duplicate, China made. You can see it's mentioned here, made in PRC. Made in PRC. It's mentioned over here. It's uh, not original kit is there, but the kit which I am having here, it is containing made in the UK. It's mentioned made in the UK on the top here at the second mentioned there. Okay, so what exactly it contains? 
as i told it's a it's just a replacement of the motherboard so it can be used as a computer system there computer system is comprising of four main parts the first is input device second is output device third is cpu and fourth is memory fine four main parts are there which are present so raspberry pi is containing all of these particular four parts and we will pop with this particular kit is vhs chip just just a minute Okay, so <clears throat> let us see. So, uh, as four parts are there to the computer system: input device, output device, is CPU, and the memory. So, all four things are present on this particular kit. See, if you start from this part here, you can see two slots are available. You may have seen these slots uh, somewhere also. You can see this part is there. This is what uh, four USBs are there. Two USBs on this side, okay. Two USBs are here and two USBs are here. Uh, this is three third version. In the fourth version, in the third version, basically, all four USBs are USB 2.0. Okay, all four are you mentioned over there 2.0. And in Raspberry Pi 4, two USBs are 2.0 and two USBs are 3.0. You might be doing 3.0 is faster, almost 10 times faster than USB 2.0. So whenever you have to use the faster uh, USB devices. You can use this particular ports there. And make sure USBs are now getting used for almost all kind of uh, uh, design, uh, all, all kind of hardware communication interfacing there. Like I want to connect the uh, keyboard to this, I want to connect the mouse to it, or printer, scanners. Okay, printer scanners are just like the scanner is input device, printer is the output devices, or uh, keyboard, mouse are the input devices. So all input output. All, including your mobile phone, including your digital camera, or any other device which contains the uh, USB ports, they can be connected here at this location. See, four ports are present here. Fine. This side, this part. And below to that, you can see there is one more block present, and it's mentioned there Ethernet. Ethernet. Ethernet is a network cable, network port here, RF232. This is your network port present that also I can use here present at this location. Ethernet port where you can connect the gigabit Ethernet by which the network in the Raspberry Pi is possible. So as I told uh, uh, in the previous session also, network is important. Networking is essential and uh, if you want to create a network, IoT applications are part of networking. Without networking, IoT devices cannot be created. So if you want to create a network, I, I, I can use this Ethernet port there, this particular port. Fine. Now, yes, this is your output device, another. What is that? You can see HDMI. The loop of HDMI is written there. You might be knowing this is the HDMI. On this side, you can find this HDMI is present here. This one. Okay. So we are now familiar with HDMI, high definition media interface. So whenever you have to connect your output device, uh, like TV screen or computer monitors. Uh, so we can use this HDMI port. So if I had to view this output, I can use it. I'm having my television over here, but maybe it's not possible to show it. I'll show the another method to see the graphical interface of it that we generally use to develop the applications over here. Okay. So this is your 
एच डी एम आई टूडे इन राजगरी फाइव फोर्थ आर्किटेक्चर आर्किटेक्चर ऑफ फोर्थ देर आर टू एच डी एम आईज आर नाउ अवेलेबल इन माइक्रो एच डी एम आईज ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट दिस एच डी एम आई इज वेरी कॉमनली एच डी एम आई माइक्रो एच डी एम आई इज नॉट गेटिंग फैमिलियर इन दी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स टूडे बट मे बी इन फ्यूचर वी मे बी हैविंग द माइक्रो एच डी एम आई कोर्स ऑल्सो स्पीड इज एक्चुअली लेस ओके दिस वन नाउ uh next start here you can see so hdmi can be used to connect the display screen so what exactly os is present just like a computer i am having a computer screen present here you are having your laptop screen your computer screen and you see what uh, the interaction method that you used to interact with computer system we are using that display screen so if you want to connect that we'll be using that this particular your hdmi port which is mentioned over here shown over here fine this one so all we know it's the audio jack actually this one okay 1.6 mm where we can connect the audio devices audio can be inputted or can be outputted with the help of this particular port okay audio jack here you can connect your uh, microphone so that is connected here okay in my laptop currently so you can just take an input in the form of audio or you can take an output in the form of audio using the respective port there okay and this is most important one so you can see the here it's mentioned uh, pwr in that is power in power see it's like uh, uh, your original uh, sorry your mobile uh, uh, charging port is there same way the small usb port that's present here take this the first one First, which is shown over here, this side. It's present. Okay, this one. So it requires only plus five volt power supply. So that is sufficient to get operated. So it's like computer doesn't contain that, and the power supply is coming on the power electronic. Okay, so here it will be operated on plus five volt power supply also. This one here you can use. Now these are the common utilities which uh, the particular board is containing. Along with that. i contain some extra utilities also what are the extra utilities so here you can see it's a display written over here display raspberry pi is containing its own display screen so on this board on or this particular board the size of this particular board is exactly equal to your credit card or debit card this one so you can think of it how small is that exact equal it if you keep it on this particular board so exactly it will be matching there and same kind same size screen is also available on which you can see the particular uh, internal content of operating system that can be fitted on the raspberry pi here and its display port is this which is shown over here this one fine and along with that raspberry pi can contain extra camera also external camera can also be connected to the raspberry pi connect this camera here we are having this one raspberry pi contains own camera uh, uh, third version is now available i think so 8 megapixel camera is now available 5 megapixel camera was present before that 2 megapixel camera was uh, created by raspberry pi foundation to connect that to the raspberry pi currently 8 megapixel camera is available which you can insert at this point okay so many times when home security systems are uh, were created so they were requiring this kind of cameras and uh, with of this camera it's possible to create the surveillance systems okay surveillance systems uh, can be created where you can capture the images capture the videos and based on that some iot application which is having the surveillance system present in that can be possible fun so this is what the raspberry pi along with that the few more utilities i'll just mention small over here uh, this is your cpu that is your micro processor so uh, as i told uh, as you might might be knowing that iot applications are of two kind some hardware are of micro processor based some are of micro controller based micro processor based contains the all it is is micro processor based where cpu is present and it's acting like a control uh, device for all uh, the systems are connected there microcontroller is like arduino you know arduino is microcontroller and uh, it's given there simulators are also available raspberry pi doesn't contain any kind of simulator so uh, because the microprocessor based way uh, 
difficult to have simulations of this one. Maybe in future you will get that. Okay, so this is your CPU present here. Broadcom comparing that created in another mention. Broadcom ECM two eight three seven is the number. Okay, two eight three five was the first version. Two eight three six was the second version, and two eight three seven is the third version of uh, the Broadcom ECM is available or uh, Raspberry Pi is available over there. Okay, and uh, okay, if anything, huh? Yeah, here this one, this chip. Where the made in PRC return, there I'm having a small chip present. That chip is basically created for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. Here is present there Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on the top. This particular part and it's mentioned over here PRC this part. Fine. This is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So I can connect my Raspberry Pi to the Wi-Fi connection. So we don't require the Ethernet port also. Even for short range communication, I can use the Bluetooth also, by which the establishment of communication with very short ten meter distance is possible. The Wi-Fi can cover more than that distance also. I feel it's also good. Uh, this is the reason why Wi-Fi is basically preferred to perform that question. I'll show how do we connect the system to the uh, Wi-Fi over here. Now, if I go to the back of it, okay, uh, let's show that. The back side is not present there. This is the back side of it. See. So here in the back side, this is the front side. Okay, where we have seen many utilities present, and uh, all utilities we have seen uh, here where the processor is present. This processor I have attached with the heat sink because to allow the dis dissipation of heat, these heat sinks are added. Okay, and if you go to the back. Of it, you can see here there is a SD card present. This one is a micro SD card. Check this. Its capacity is uh, 16 GB, 16 gigabytes, and your operating system is installed in that. It's like a hard disk that we use, hard disk that we use. So same way, operating system is installed in the SD card of 16 gigabyte. You can see this. Here, this is the video core GPU, this one, video core GPU, where the, uh, it can the abilities to uh, play the games and show the videos which are of high resolution, fine, this one, okay, this one. So, the two things are present at the back. Out of all, one utility is remaining now, which we require in IoT, see this. If I put Raspberry Pi in this particular way, you can see this set of pins are available here, see this, these are the set of pins present here, this location, this one, okay, headers are the pin headers, okay, total 40 pin headers are present there, see, 40 pin headers are there, and these pin headers are used to interact with the external devices, and they are called as GPIO pin, they are called as GPIO pin, you can see this, these are the pin headers, 40 pin headers are there here, they are connected. This one. This we basically used to connect the Raspberry Pi <coughs> with your systems. Okay. With the IoT devices, with the help of with the sensors basically. So n number of the sensors are there uh, that we used to interact uh, the Raspberry Pi there. So on these pins here, on this pins mentioned that they are GPIO. I'll show that. Okay, it's mentioned here GPIO. 40 pins are there. 20 are odd numbered and 20 are the even number. We'll see their architecture diagram also. So, where what kind of devices can be connected that uh, we need to recognize, we need to uh, identify. Based on that, we can interact these particular devices uh, with the help of this particular uh, Raspberry Pi. This is what the common architecture of Raspberry Pi is. So basically, see, as I told, whatever a computer is containing is, is possible in the Raspberry Pi also. Exactly the same way. You can use the Raspberry Pi. So we can connect keyboard mouse, we can connect display device, we can connect the audio pins also. So I can use it as a computer. It is containing the RAM of one GB also. Okay, 
that amount of RAM is present. Even current flavors of Raspberry Pi is running 2 GB RAM, 4 GB RAM. They're also available. But the cost is also increasing uh, in that particular proportion there. Okay. Okay. See, this is Raspberry Pi 4. The current version available, as I told, the differences between both. So, what exactly different that they are carrying? See, uh, these are pin headers, 40. Okay. Here we have gigabit Ethernet and as I told, four USBs are there. Out of four USBs, two USBs are 3.0 and two USBs are 2.0. Okay, two USB 2.0, two are 3.0. Okay. This is your four pole stereo audio uh, jack is there, by which you can uh, take the data in the sound format, input and output. Both. Okay. Then uh, this is your camera port. This is your, yeah. So two micro HDMI ports are there. So currently we are not familiar. Indian electronics is not yet familiar with micro electronics, micro uh, HDMI port. That's why fourth version is not getting much, not getting yet much popular there. Third version is still in use because of HDMI port is present. By which you can possibly it's possible. But now micro HDMI can also be used. Uh, we require a converter. That converter will convert the HDMI micro HDMI to the HDMI port there and most importantly usb port present there it is of type c okay usb c with three volt uh, five volt power supply and three volt uh, three ampere currents present in it then it contains a display port sd uh, sd card slot at the back of it and here is wireless bluetooth port is very big so it is actually big five gigahertz wireless is there and 2.4 2.4 to 5 gigahertz wireless bluetooth 5.0 uh, is available okay 40 being set up like always. So, this is what the current versions of uh, the Raspberry Pis are containing. Okay, they are uh, just like this. So, fine. Raspberry Pi. So, it's a computer. Even I use it as a computer. I'm having my television and where you can connect the HDMI cable. Right? The HDMI cable is possible to view a predictive system on your television. There are two. Yeah, so let's see what exactly is contained. Whatever I told, I just have summarized all together. So first generation Raspberry Pi, that is Raspberry Pi 1 model B, it was released in 2012 and B plus was 2014. A was also there. See, all the uh, more models currently available, they are of type B, as I told already. Why B? Why not A? That's also uh, interesting to the nature. A version doesn't contain the Ethernet port. The Ethernet port which is present here. It is not present in the A version. Raspberry Pi A is not containing that. Uh, but only first version Raspberry Pi was not containing the Ethernet port, but second is also containing third containing fourth containing version. That's why only B version is present. A versions are not available for that. Even Raspberry Pi 0 is also available. Uh, almost 50% of its size is carried in there. But it doesn't contain this USB port and Ethernet port. Only Wi Fi communication port is there by which you can uh, write the program and the RAM is also 512. And so on. See, Raspberry Pi 2 was released in 2015, 3 was released in February 2016, and uh, Raspberry Pi 4 was released in 2020. And we'll see, uh, like 2012, 16, and 20, so every uh, leap year, on every leap year, these versions were released. And February 2018, 17, Raspberry Pi 0W was released. Then, what are the features? It contains um, Broadcom system on chip, so might be known as SOC system on chip. Every uh, kind of uh, hardware device that is required to operate this computer is uh, present on this particular board, uh, along with video core GPU also, video core ID, fourth version. And uh, the speed of uh, processor is 1.4 gigahertz. Current version is only 1.4 gigahertz. This one RAM is of 4 GB for current versions 4 GB, 2 GB. Two flavors are there. Even 1 GB RAM is present for Raspberry Pi 3. And it's sufficient to operate it and to install the operating system. We are using this particular SD card, which is mentioned over there. Secure digital card SD card. Okay. HDMI port, all uh, kind of port, along with Ethernet port, Wi Fi port, uh, sorry, Wi Fi communication uh, devices, or Bluetooth communication, all these things are possible. I am talking with the operating system. We have the operating system Raspbian presented. I'll show you how to install Raspbian. 
uh, it's not possible to show the demo test right now. It's a offline demonstration is possible, but I'll show the process how to install it. But along with Raspbian, wait a minute, let us see Raspbian operating system. Raspbian is a Linux based operating system basically. Here, different kind of resources are present that can be just done. We come below. This is us, the official website, I think. I have changed the link now. Raspbian OS can be downloaded. Also, we find ah, here the downloads are sorry. So, the different, different downloads. I think the reports are there. This should be interesting. Just a moment. software sorry raspberry pi os this is present this is the official website from where it's downloaded it's a linux based operating system basically 100 percent raspberry raspbian os so they are containing one uh, raspberry pi imager like this that you have to use download install and here from here you have to choose the operating system there you can download even to uh, for x86 can be downloaded uh, as I'm using here. And under that, we are having the Raspberry Pi RPI Imager software. RPI Imager. Okay, this Imager software will give you the uh, this kind of GUI and it is used to insert the image of Raspberry uh, Pi operating system into your SD card. Into your SD card. Your uh, micro SD card basically that's this image is basically used to do that previously uh, we were using different kind of uh, software like image creation image creators or power iso nero that software were used to operate here you can see you can download the uh, system image there even raspberry pi desktop is also available see this here raspberry pi os okay with desktop currently it's released on october 30 kernel kernel version is present size is also mentioned there with recommended software, light only terminal based interface is also possible. This is legacy desktop. I was the only desktop, 2 GB spaces there. Maybe with only in your laptop, also you can install Raspberry Pi operating system. And along with that, some third party OS are also available. Third party means they are not created by Raspberry Pi Foundation. There's a Libre Elect, uh, Kodi Entertainment Environment, like most of the uh, entertainment devices like mobile phones or, or sorry, uh, your televisions are containing Kodi operating system present in that. So that also possible to install in Raspberry Pi. See, you want to desktop, you want to server, you want to core, you have to apply things here. Likewise, so all of these uh, particular operating systems are possible to install. Along with that, uh, many different uh, lightweight versions of operating systems, operating systems which are used for ARM microcontroller can also be installed in your uh, Raspberry Pi systems over here. See. Okay. The processor we talked about, processor is a Broadcom BCM 2837. Uh, before that, 2835, 2836 were used for Raspberry Pi 1 and second version there. Okay. And many uh, different, with whatever current versions we have, they're having good amount of CPU speed and RAM capacity also. And because of that, uh, the speed or overhead that uh, they're currently having is drastic. That's current flavor, current Raspberry Pi 4 is containing that. And then that can network in Ethernet, USB Ethernet adapter, Wi Fi, everything is possible and present there. In and video capabilities are good. Means high resolution except 4K, except 4K resolution. All other resolution or video playing, audio, sorry, game playing is also possible in Delphi the Raspberry Pi. There are many flavors which are present in Raspberry Pi, but the operating system which we can use it anyway. Uh, Windows IoT Core is present. Surprisingly, Windows has given something free uh, for Raspberry Pi. Uh, this can be installed Windows 10 IoT Core. 
Kali Linux is also having their own flavor. Redux is having their Fedora, operating interesting Fedora for uh, Raspberry Pi and Arch Linux and many top uh, Linux providers are having their own flavor of operating system for AMD sorry, uh, ARM architecture let's say because uh, Raspberry Pi uses ARM architecture, ARM for text architecture and uh, the operating system which is suitable for that architecture can be installed into the Raspberry Pi that the OS that you can use here. Okay. So Raspberry is the default OS which is supported along with that many different operating systems you can install. The next question. Try to remember that uh, Raspberry Pi is very, very comfortable on Linux based operating system. So, I don't try to use the Windows based OS. Windows based OS only single one is there. So, it's very uh, complicated to use and understand. Android thing, Arch Linux, open to say Raspberry Pi, Fedora, Remix, Fedora, Gen2 Linux, Intro, Kali, Flatware, Coffee Linux, like all they are possible. Along with that, some other OS than Linux and Windows, Linux version. Risk OS, FreeBSD, NetBSD, Windows 10 IoT Core, Haiku, Seren OS, Seren OS, that all can be installed on Raspberry Pi there. And there's a huge community present there. As I told about Python, Raspberry Pi also contains a very big community present there. Floss community, like Floss means free and libre open source software. Uh, the company Racor is uh, creating this particular uh, community of Raspberry Pi. And uh, they have released one fanzine. Fanzine means the magazine created by fans was MacPy. It was created in 2015. Uh, so it was very uh, early, but uh, it handed over to Raspberry Pi in 2015. And now its versions of MacPy are available online on their official website also. Okay. So that's the community. And this is MacPy magazine where you can get it on it on 12 and uh, handed over to the Raspberry Pi Foundation in 2015 there. Okay, my God. See different Raspberry Pi. We are previously uh, they were available. This is your uh, Raspberry Pi. Okay. Okay, that is the zero version. Zero. Very small plate is there. On that uh, HDMI, small HDMI is present. Micro USB is that present, and the micro SD card option is present. Only Wi-Fi connectivity is possible. This is the first version of Raspberry Pi. Okay. So this is the B flavor. This is 2B. Okay, so yes. Third version also. Along with that, Raspberry Pi Foundation provides few more things. We are providing camera, GERD port, infrared camera is there. So many such different hardware which can be connected on display port, hack, uh, expansion hardware attached on top, expansion board. They are available by which this experience can be used along with the Raspberry Pi. Now there are a few more boards are there, like we have Asus Thinker board, just like Raspberry Pi, but they are not that much popular. Okay, they can be used in IoT application design, but they are not that much popular. You can see this. This is Asus Thinker board. Exact replica of Raspberry Pi. Here. Raspberry Pi is coming under the open source hardware category. Anyone can use the design. This Arduino is also coming under open source hardware. So uh, the designs are available in many different flavors. The Asus has created Thinker board. See, you can see comparison with Raspberry Pi. Maybe if you've seen that, this is Beagle Boards, Beagle Bone, Beagle Bone, Black. We use for, again, I would application designs. See this. Okay. And many versions of Chinese flavors are also available, like the Orange Pi is there, or Banana Pi is there, Retro Pi is there. there. So different uh, kind of pie, different kind of pie uh, flavored uh, hardware were uh, available for us to use. But out of the Raspberry Pi is one of the best one, robust one, and uh, easy to handle, easy to operate. One of the most popular kind of hardware available with us, which we can use so much easily. Let's see how to do the coding, how to connect the sensor, how to connect the hardware with the Raspberry Pi step by step. So just open it. Here, and we'll see how to perform the operation with the uh, Raspberry Pi. So before that, we need to ensure how operating system will be installed in it. So remember, whenever you are having operating system, whenever you are getting the respective board with you, 
operating system may be not installed already in it. You need to install it. As I shown on the slide, on their official website, they are giving one software called as Raspberry Pi Imager. See, when you download the image, image means it's not a not an ISO file. It's a ISO file is the image of a CD or DVD, bootable CD or DVD, ISO file. The file that they are providing is an image file. This exact replica of your hard drive is created into the IMG file format, image file format. And just you have to install that image on your SD card. And SD card will be used, can also be used in uh, directly or to insert there and just proceed from that Raspbian. So Raspbian is a Debian based computer operating system. Debian is a Linux flavor actually. Uh, for Raspberry Pi is created since 2015. Until now, it is officially provided by Raspberry Pi Foundation as a primary operating system for family of Raspberry Pi single board computers. It was created by Thompson and Green as an independent project, and the uh, initiative was completed in 2012. It was also an independent project, like uh, MacPy. MacPy was an independent project. Raspberry Pi was also an independent project, but it is handed over to the uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation later works by the developers there. Now it uses the interface called as Pixel, that is Pi, uh, Pi Improved X Windows Environment. Pixel, lightweight, main desktop environment. I'll show that which desktop environment it uses. And composing of modified LXD desktop environment. Desktop environment means that GUI appearance, which is present there in the operating system, is called as the uh, interface, the desktop interface that we can use. And many different Default software is also given to them because, as I told, it was created for uh, the school children to understand and learn computer systems. So uh, they require some special kind of software. They are pre-built and they are created with the help of uh, by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. They are pre-built available in Pi. See, who has created that Raspberry Pi Foundation? Unix like Linux family is there, open source. Say Raspberry Pi, it is I think it is a scratch now. And if you are familiar with the we want to base OS, Debian base OS, the same update method, install packages method, APD, APKG, they are used. This ARM architecture, our computer system is containing x86 architecture. So general purpose OS cannot be installed in Raspberry Pi because microprocessor architecture is different. Remember, okay kernel and different interfaces like all that are possible yeah so uh, previously it was like that i've shown the official website also uh, from there the raspberry can be downloaded see this if i go to the official website there of raspberry pi here see you can see all here download option is there when i click on that oh it's downloading see this it's downloading 1.1 gb i'll just cancel it <laughs> When you click on that, it will start downloading from the given link and that is containing one file which is image file. Image, like IMG is an extension to that and that image file is present, that image file we can use to uh, directly burn that, wipe that image into the 2GB SD card. Okay, 2GB SD card and uh, 2GB, minimum 2GB. Currently, we are having 16GB, 32GB SD cards are there that will be uh, used to store uh, the operating system and insert it there. So that's directly operating system will get started. And this is what has been OS is there. Many different operating system can be chosen. Okay. See. So this is how this operation is there. You have to complete disk writing process. Any software can be used. So this image that they have given, you have to choose the image, insert it into SD card, the write it to SD card and done. And we have to insert that SD card into the Raspberry Pi, which is at the back of it. See, this one. At the back, we have to insert the Raspberry Pi SD card, which is containing the image of Raspbian OS. And once we given the power supply to it, just like uh, your mobile charges cable is containing previous USB, so I can just connect it there, and it will start the Raspberry Pi. And then you can see the operating system after that. Now, uh, I'll show the appearance, how to connect and use it there. The programming languages which are used in Raspbian are this. By default, their compiler interpreters are available. Python, 
and python is the main language recommended for coding the raspberry pi c is also present c also can be used for coding but c is coding is somewhat complicated c++ is also there java is also present scratch uh, maybe if you know there are many organizations are now coming up online they are giving the training to your school children to teach them coding so they use this language scratch it was created by raspberry pi foundation nearly 20 years ago almost 20 years ago to 20 years ago uh, to teach computer programming to school children and now it has become popular in india uh, that they use this language to teach coding or programming to school children it is easy actually to understand it's by default pre built available in raspberry pi even now its desktop versions are also available it can be used online also and very easy to if you want uh, Any, anyone want to learn or start coding they can start from the scratch programming language different uh, commands which we can use to install maybe we don't require right now uh, once we got familiar with raspberry pi then we can use this linux command these are the linux command debian based so ubuntu based commands are there which are used to install the software upgrade the software update the software remove the software delete the software from your computer system Okay, so these commands are basically used to do that. Now, how do access the Raspberry Pi? It's very uh, common question I used to get from most of the students also. So there are multiple ways present that we can use to perform the operations. Now, uh, Raspberry Pi can be accessed using Linux terminal and Using my Windows also. Within Windows, we have a software called as Putty, P U T T Y, which can be used to access it. Uh, but in general, we use uh, Linux terminal to access it. See, one thing: once we install the operating system inside the SD card, once we install the OS, that time it doesn't contain any extra software, anything. Nothing is there. It's a fresh. OS that we install in this particular kit, okay, fresh operating system we install there, and uh, basically this operating system is by default available uh, for Raspbian operating system over here. Now, how do we install that? You install it. We inserted this SD card, but how to view this? For the first time, when you start Raspberry Pi, you require your HDMI cable to view the graphical user interface of it. Here is the HDMI port present. Okay, there you have to connect your HDMI uh, cable, and second end you can connect to your display device, maybe your computer monitor or your television. Both are containing HDMI ports now. There you can see the UI of your computer system, and you can handle it as it is. Just connect keyboard mouse to it and handle it. But currently, I don't have the things to show you. So what I am doing, I am connecting this Raspberry Pi in my network, my Wi-Fi network, the Wi-Fi network which I am using currently here. In that network, I'll be connecting. I have to connect it there. It will contain one IP address. Once you connect your Raspberry Pi in your network, your Wi-Fi network or your local area network, it will contain one IP address. IP address. Using that IP address, I can access the Raspberry Pi's Linux terminal by this command, which is shown over here. SSH pi at the rate IP address, especially IP address one ninety two dot one six zero one dot three. I just mentioned randomly there. So whatever IP address is present, that I just need to know, and then I can access it. So if you are using Windows operating system, you have to use Putty software. I'll show you. I am not having Windows here. That's why it is not possible to show that. You can see. When you go to search it on net, Putty is a software to access the uh, data in the remote shape. So you can download it from here. Here is the link from it. Putty can be downloaded. Same way, it's very easy to handle and use it. So you can. Just check this link from where the this putty uh, maybe 64 bit or ARM or 32 bit the flavor can be downloaded and once you uh, downloaded this particular software from here you can see this kind of appearance. Oops. 
So I'm just going to small that. So this kind of interface you will get. This kind of interface will be there. In downloading putty on Windows, here you have to enter your IP address of Raspberry Pi. Whatever. When you connect your Raspberry Pi to the system, I'll show where the IP address is shown. Uh, I show that one. That IP address you have to show enter here 192.168.1.5 something whatever port number default 22 and here connection type will be SSH secured shell secured shell once it is enabled then I can directly connect to the Raspberry Pi Linux terminal once we got the access Linux terminal I can type the commands to access it. This is first method that we basically prefer. And second method is accessing its graphical user interface. That is its remote desktop. A remote desktop. That also I'll show you how to access the remote desktop also. So, but for both the cases, your Raspberry Pi should be present in the same network. Same LAN, local LAN network, same Wi-Fi network there. So when they are in the same network, then it is possible to access the Linux terminal of Raspberry Pi and or graphical user interface that is the desktop of the Raspberry Pi also. So either you can use this method, the Putty's method or we can use the desktop client method. For desktop client, you can access the remote desktop. Then also I'll show you how to access it. But before that, let us see how can I access my Raspberry Pi's terminal there. So this is my Raspberry Pi. Okay. And I have connected the charger cable. This is the common charger cable that we use, and I just connect it there. So once you connect it there, see this here is connected. Okay, and here you can see two uh, LEDs are there which are blinking. Two LEDs are there which are blinking, which are connected there. Once we have connected here. It will be automatically get connected to your default Wi-Fi. Okay, first time you are connected there. Remember, maybe you are secured by the password, and you are given the password by connecting it. And then I want to access it without using my television or without using my uh, display uh, screen. There, I can access. I can access it. So it's connected. Only single pin is there. Nothing more. Even you can connect it with the batteries also. I we used to when you develop the application of IoT, so we use the batteries, nine volt batteries are there that we can connect and uh, then we can use that re, uh, rechargeable batteries there to connect it. But generally, I don't require anything. Uh, I can connect Ethernet port. Ethernet communication is also possible, but it can only local uh, communication, not the internet communication. Here you can access the internet okay, by making this connection. The SD card is inserted. Okay. And one more thing to note that every Raspberry Pi, when you install for first time, it contains default username as Pi, P-I. Default username is Pi. Default host name is Raspberry Pi. And default password is Pi, uh, Raspberry, sorry. Default password is Raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. And using this username and password, you can access the Raspberry Pi in your system. So either you can use Putty, or if you're having Linux operating system present in the same network, so that is also possible. That also uh, can be used there. Let us see how do I access it. So I'll just open my terminal here. Uh, just see this. So just I have connected it there. I think it's visible now. This is my own computer systems terminal and I want to access the Raspberry Pi. So I can access by using the command SSH. Secured shell is a command, Linux command, which is used to access the remote terminal, remote desktop terminal by username and IP address. So Pi, username of lab, your Raspberry Pi is this Pi at the rate 
then ip address when i connected my raspberry pi to my wi-fi for first time its ip address was like 192.168.32.164 ssh secure shield pi at the rate 192.168.43.164 is my ip address my raspberry pi ip address okay if i want to see my ip address i'll just show you there's a command called as ifconfig, which can be used to see your IP address. So when I enter ifconfig command, so I can show you my IP address here. It is important to know. So whenever you are working in IoT, make sure you are familiar with the networking concept. Person who want to be the part of IoT, and you don't know what is networking, what is IP address, what is port number, what is protocol, very difficult to understand that concept or difficult to create a design of IoT application there. So IP address is at least required. This is the IP address of my laptop. Okay, and here I have used the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. Pi is the username. By default, every Linux system is containing the username to it. So default username is Pi and host name is Raspberry Pi and password is Raspberry. I have entered my password. So this is very interesting thing that whenever we used to conduct the training session physically, so student used to say that the password is not getting typed. Remember on Linux operating system, passwords are not visible. Password not visible means your, how many characters are there that is also not visible. So make sure I have entered the password there. Password is Raspberry, which is default password and uh, which is not visible. How many characters are there? Not only just like Windows star, 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 star are there. It's not there. You can directly have it. See. Okay. Linux center it has got connected to the Raspberry Pi. See, I can see this is my original computer, Mitu Adam Spilavaji. Mitu is my username. Spilavaji is my host name. Okay. And now I have connected to my Raspberry Pi by this command. IP address is not same. Huh? IP address we need to recognize by your own. Okay. You need to recognize IP address by your own. Okay, and using this command, it's possible to interact with the Raspberry Pi and make sure you can keep Raspberry Pi anywhere, but should be in the same network. If it is in the same network, you can access the Raspberry Pi from any location with the same connecting with the same network there. And this is why IoT applications are very easily required or used there, not only embedded system applications. IoT application with the networking or internet is uh, present in the picture. Networking and uh, the internet both should be present. If they are there, then only we call it as the uh, applications of uh, IoT, applications of internet of things. Okay, IoT application we generally call. And now we can see here the username, IP address. Okay, IP address is used and pi at the rate Raspberry Pi. This is your port number sorry your uh, host number host name and uh, the username is possible so see now it means that now i am accessing okay now i am accessing the raspberry pi's terminal okay raspberry pi's terminal over here this is how uh, things are created okay and now i can see the detailed architecture detail uh, operation introduction of your System over here. Okay, so it's possible to see. Let us see how to use and how to handle it. So there's a command called as ls. Maybe if you know, uh, it's a Linux command. Uh, with the help of this Linux command, I can see the list of files present in my system. So they are listed shown over here. If I want to see my uh, configuration, uh, this is a concept called as lscpu. I can use. You can see. LSCPU command shows the uh, CPU architecture of your computer. So I'm using ARM V71. I'm using this. My Raspberry Pi is using this. Is, it's connected there with the network. This one. Okay. And that terminal I'm accessing from that. Little Indian CPU for quad core architecture is present there. And its uh, CPU is this. Then CPU maximum hertz speed is 1.2 gigahertz and minimum speed is 600 megahertz, like all. Yeah, available there. 
and which architecture we use that is also you can see architecture is arm 71 7l i think or one something where architecture that is present in raspbian uh, operating system sorry raspberry pi basically okay for that i have installed these systems okay fine and if i want to switch into uh, the particular folders i can use this like i want to move to the desktop is it there yes desktop is present yeah desktop is there so i can switch to desktop but you need to understand the linux command for that case and the one file is present on the desktop there and now from here i can fire the command for example i want to execute a, a, a file uh, i want to write a program of python and i want to execute it over there so i can do that let us see how to do so like nano nano is the editor basically uh, let's see first dot file so i have created that nano is an editor is a terminal based editor which we can use to create a file so its editor is visible to you and i want to write a program to print addition of two numbers so just like in previous session we talked about at the four and you can do num1 that's num2 okay and then i'll print the addition here Okay, then num1 I have stored, num2 also stored, add, I have done addition of num1 plus num2, and then I have printed this addition on the screen. Correct? And I will come out. You can see there is exit uh, shortcut key is present control X. And you can see the content of this file. This is a Python program. Just I have created here. Okay. And I want to execute that Python program now. So using nano editor, I can create it. And using cat, I can see the content of this particular file. And I want to execute by using the Python 3 first dot file. This is how I can write the codes on the Raspberry Pi. Nano editor can be used. You can Edit the file here and write the code over there. And then this is the content of the file. If you execute that, I am writing Python 3 first dot file. What is file name that UI extension is there? And I'm getting executed. So Python by default present. Python by default present inside the Raspberry Pi. Okay. And in this way, I can execute the code of Python there. Correct. And for IoT application design also, you can use a similar method to perform the operation there. Now, this is the first method, that is terminal-based method that we use to write the program of Python on the Raspberry Pi. Let's see the second method, which is, we say, it's a graphical user interface method. I want to access the remote desktop. So to access the remote desktop, there's a protocol called as VNC protocol. VNC protocol that I want to use, I have to use that. So let us see how to access the VNC protocol. So uh, you need to download uh, some software which is used to access the remote desktops. So which softwares may be required? Let us see. The software that I require there is to access the sorry, the type VNC. You can see this. Type VNC is a software. That I require to download and access the remote desktop, desktop operating system directly of your system. You can see download now option is present here, and here is a 64 bit version of the VNC, tight VNC. VNC viewer is also there, but VNC viewer is limited, having some limited additions. This is the website of tight VNC viewer. You can use VNC viewer by which you can you have to enter your IP address, username, password. Of Raspberry Pi, you can see the graphical user interface of your Raspberry Pi. This is a tight VNC that you can see is posted in the chat box and you can use it there. Then download installer for your Windows 64 bit. I, I think everywhere Windows 64 bit available and you can use it from here. Download it once you downloaded it, then I can access the remote desktop of your Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is connected there. But what desktop, what exactly the operating system is present in Raspberry Pi, if you have to see. So
so we will have the remote desktop viewer software something like this so this is right okay there i'll be getting a new connection here see a new connection will get open i think it's visible to you open okay new connection will get open and inside it inside this can i share the full screen See, this is the option that you will get when you open the VNC viewers. Here, protocol is VNC, this one, VNC plugin, and where you have to connect, what you have to connect. I want to connect Raspberry Pi with 192.168.43.164. It was the IP address that I have to use. My username is Pi, and uh, the password is Raspberry. Okay. This is your password. Raspberry. I entered it there. And color depth to fit is this color. You can choose as per our requirement. Quality is quality. Step good. Save and connect. So once you screen sharing is stopped. And here I'm entering my password. See, this is your remote desktop from Raspberry Pi can be seen. This is the remote desktop of Raspberry Pi. Check this. Is it visible? Yes, I have accessed the Raspberry Pi. Getting closed. Huh. I think it's visible now. See this. This is my Raspberry Pi's operating system. Graphical user interface of the GUI of that Raspberry Pi is seen, can be seen over here. Check this. Screen sharing problem rather. Wait a minute. See this. This is my Raspbian OS. It's a Linux best operating system. And here you can see all uh, of these retail, uh, utility that I require are presented here. This is my Wi Fi connection. And when I go to that connection, you can see the IP address of the system will be shown. It's shown that WLAN 0 configured on 192.168.43.164. This is the IP address which I have used to connect to the particular system. Okay. And for secure share also, for SSH also, I will use the similar kind of mechanism to connect there. Ethernet is down, Ethernet is not connected, but all other things are present there. You can see Bluetooth is off also. This is Wi Fi connected to my own internal network, which I have created. Fine, like all. And this is your operating system. I have access to it. If you have a television screen or if you have your uh, laptop or your computer screen, separate monitor screen, so you can directly connect to HDMI, this screen can be visible. But I am accessing a remote desktop with the help of my internal network. So with the help of my internal network, I am accessing this. And you can see. Uh, on the Raspbian, many different utilities are present. If you go to programming, here I can see uh, utilities like uh, Python 3 and Python 2. Yeah, these two are available. Idle. By using this idle, I can write the code to interface with the Raspberry Pi and uh, to interface the sensors with the Raspberry Pi, basically. This idle can be chosen. And many utilities which you require to use your Raspberry Pi as a computer, they are also present inside. You can see office utilities, internet, 
I, I imagine Chrome web browser here. Games, other like accessories. Media player, we'll see. And many preferences. One more thing that we need to remember that uh, in the preferences, if you see Raspberry Pi configuration here, this configuration is containing the interfaces here. Interfaces means which kind of interfaces of Raspberry Pi are allowed or not allowed, disabled or enabled. So camera, I have enabled. So I can access the camera using Raspberry Pi. SSS also I have enabled. When you install the OS for first time, these interfaces are disabled. These interfaces are disabled. Remember, so you have to manually enable them, then it is possible to access SSH or VNC also, camera also. So it was disabled, so I enabled it, so I can access the SSH. VNC, just like the remote desktop, also enabled. If you disable it, no one can access your remote desktop. Okay, it should be done initially. I have enabled it already. All they are enabled. Rem only remote GPI is disabled. Remaining all this are so camera, SSH, and VNC are compulsory to enable it. So I've enabled that, and because of that, it's possible to access the Raspberry Pi over here. The program just I have created is present here. You can see first dot py. Correct. It's available there. And I can execute that particular program also. I can open it and execute it. If I click on the folder, so I can go to my home folder of the Raspbian operating system there, or the program which I have created, which I have used, they are available there in my home folder. Okay, along with that, there are many different folders also I can use and I can store the data as per your requirements. So it's really acting like a computer system, just like your computer is used. I can use the Raspberry Pi also as a computer. See, many computer programs, so Raspberry Pi program I have created. Already present in this system there. Fine. Close it. So, this method we use to access Raspberry Pi. And important method is coding. How do we code? This is interesting and important. So, I'll go to uh, programming, and there is a Python 3 idle present. Okay. So, we'll open Python 3 idle. This is the default idle, default software, which is given by Python Software Foundation to start coding in the Python programming language. There. So it's a shell interpreter that, that I can say is present over there. Inside it, if I go to file menu, new file, a new file will get open. And inside this file, okay, I can write my Python program or I can open my Python program. I'll open this file, which you have created and present on desktop. This is your Python file. Okay. Yeah. See, this is my Python file, which I've created. So I, I can write this file from creating file, new file over here. And same way, I can write my Python file. So this is the location where I can write my Python file. I can execute it from here and I can write a program to interface the sensors with the Raspberry Pi. So I'll go to run and here's run model option is there. And I execute that, you can see the output of this code on the screen. Addition is 100. That same code, which I executed using terminal, I have executed by using the Python ID, idle. Idle is integrated development learning environment. So, okay, idle. Fine. This is location where I have to write the code. And now let us see how to interface the sensors with Raspberry Pi. So, these activities we have we require. So, that's the one time activity basically. Once you have connected Raspberry Pi to your system, so it will be continuously connected. It will be kept on continuously connected to your system and you can use that. Uh, particular data, uh, particular interfacing of particular programs on the Raspberry Pi over there. Fine. So let's close this. Close this also. And we'll continue with the IoT application design using the Raspberry Pi. So we'll talk about the things that we require to understand to code the IoT applications using the Raspberry Pi here. So sensors and actuators. So two things are there. 
basically we'll talk about the sensors only actually there is very big concept that uh, maybe it's not possible to cover in very short time see uh you might be knowing who has created your computer architecture computer architecture was devised by hungarian mathematician john von neumann maybe if you heard about this name von neumann computer architecture we called out this architecture says that computer system is having input device output device have cpu and memory as i told there are four parts are present so computer is comprising of this particular four parts right and if you are using the raspberry pi so this architecture will be something like this iot based embedded system architecture or not iot embedded system architecture sensor is the input device to raspberry pi memory is present 1 gb ram and having with my my raspberry pi and actuator is something which generate action action i'll show one actuator here action can be in the form of uh, some speed motion action can be in the form of light action can be in the form of uh, sound okay so any action that can be generated so basically when you create an embedded system so we'll be making use of like that and when you convert embedded system into the iot we require a network see the difference between embedded system and iot is that embedded system extension is iot only the thing is that iot contains a network you do the same application but we control this by using your network that is what iot is and it can be connected all over the globe so basically when you create iot application we are giving facility to access that application any from anywhere where the network is available anywhere where the network is available can you use it fine this is all the iot based architecture in raspberry pi is possible so raspberry pi is a processor we have to give sensor as input actuator as the output memory is already present so what is sensor maybe throughout the fbb uh, we'll be having a separate session on the sensors i don't know uh, so it's, it's necessary to understand the iot application so what is sensor then sensor is a detector or a detector basically it's a device that is used to convert physical parameter into the signal that can be measured or monitored for example a gas sensor monitors a gas concentration level and converts it into state electrical signal that can be measured that can be measured so input parameter can be like light measurement temperature measurement humidity with pressure measurement like all any all human identifiable entities can be given as input to computer identifiable entities there and that is done with the help of sensor so physical entities can be converted into electrical signals with the help of sensors so according to the oxford dictionary's definition a sensor is a device which is detects or measures a physical property and records indicates Otherwise, respond to it called as the sensor. The sensor is an object whose purpose is to detect events or changes in its environment and then provide the corresponding output. We can feel the temperature. We can feel the pressure. We can feel vibrations. We can feel smell. We can see something. We can find distance. But how computer will understand? The computer require. an electronic component which will convert your human understandable entities into computer understandable entities which we call as a sensor that sensor the sensor is operation now so sensor is classified based on various aspects such as application based sense like industrial sensor automotive sensor output based sensor like differential output differential uh, capacitivity output voltage output like all and most probably we use the sensor in the parameter based sensing like light sensor temperature sensor humidity sensor many are there let's see light temperature proximity pressure gas current biometric sound tilt hall effect accelerometer compass flow humidity level motion speed rpm force energy like all all these entities can be measured with the top sensor more than 150 different kind of sensors are available if you want to be the part of the iot so just start playing with sensor the sensor available on different 
uh, online website which are selling electronic components or you can search them on the Amazon website also. It will be at very low cost. Okay. Yeah. Second part is actuator, which is generating an action. So actuator is a component of machine that is responsible for moving or controlling a mechanism or a system. Okay, action generator we call that. So action can be of any kind, like moving or generating the light or generating the action, moment, momentum, or uh, sound, like all. So actual requires a, actual requires a control signal and source of energy. So even many things, like any such kind of outputs are possible from the actuators. You can see that. So many sensors, we can actuate, LED is an actuator, LED generates the action in the form of light, blinks, loads, RGB LED, buzzer, buzzer generates the action in the form of sound, okay, buzzers, servo motor, motor generated in the form of actions, okay, rotations, DC motor, relays, relays are like uh, that is to control the electrical appliances. Okay. Home automation system. Maybe uh, you may learn somewhere in the FDP also. It's very common IoT application design. Home automation. Home appliances are electrical appliances actually. They are operating on very high voltage. And if you have to control them with Raspberry Pi, we require a relay. Relay. Relay is just like a switch. It's just like a switch. So if you make the relay on, the electrical uh, component will be on. If you are making it off, it will become off. That's it. Actuators. That is to generate some action. So whenever you create IoT application, these are very important to satisfy the need requirement of the complete IoT design there. So there is some actuator which can be satisfied. Yeah, see this. These are the state of sensors and actuators we are having with us. I'm having So some sensors actuators that uh, can be used and uh, I'll show the coding interface of which method mechanism that we use there while we code uh, that also I'll show you okay so different ways are there that is possible to uh, perform operation just a minute let us see this some of the sensors I'll show see uh, this is your distance sensor you may have seen that somewhere this it is this sensor is available in the toys also in the toys also the sensor is available see just a minute it's used to measure the distance so distance sensor or uh, uh, this we will see today it is the uh, ir sensor infrared sensors check for use for obstacle detection see this one i'll show you detailed diagram and see how to handle it since it is not a sensor it's a sensor module when nearly five six years ago when we started iot application to that time we need to create these devices by connecting the uh, photodiode separately or uh, the led separately like all okay now they are given in build that by default available like this or if you see this is your servo motor actually there is servo motor which is uh, not rotating in uh, 360 degrees so it's having some angles. Robotic arms are designed by doing this particular sensor over there. There is one more sensor, see this. This is your uh, temperature sensor, DHT22 sensor is there. DHT11 was also present. I'm having that one also. This generally is more accurate. This go, it shows the temperature in the uh, centigrade format and in floating point uh, results will be shown by that. This is your temperature, and DHT11. I'll show this one. and. Uh, yeah, I think this is seen. Or uh, three more sensors which are uh, used there to uh, connect different kind of things. This is your humidity sensor. You can see this. This is the humidity sensor. Basically, it's a module actually. We want some control circuitry to control it. So there is a control circuit. Every sensor is containing now because of need of this technology. See, it's like created in this way. Okay, here is the module, and here is your. Circuit, circuit and module both are there. So this way or uh, few more. Ah, there is one more sensor which is to detect the light. 
continue. There's an LDR present on the top of it here, and we should detect the existence of light. Light present or not present? That can be seen. So it's an LDR sensor, light sensor basically, to be used to access the data. So sensors are the input devices which we use uh, to connect uh, your system. So we can just find what exactly happening in the IoT system there, and with the report we can uh, create such. Applications are very easy and uh, simple too. So uh, we can, uh, those who are knowing Python, they can easily write this particular course there. But before actually creating the application, we need to understand few things here. Like the Raspberry Pi, which I am using here, it is containing these particular ports. The GPIO on the top of it. This one. Correct. GPIO pins are there. Now, these GPIO pins are basically used to interact, interface, sensors and actuators with the Raspberry Pi. And coding is done using Python. But as I told, there are 40 pins are there. It's not like you take and connect it there. Every pin is having some specific meaning assigned to it. And using that meaning only, you need to understand that meaning and where you have to connect what kind of pin that we need to know, that we need to recognize. Okay, so total 40 pins, their pin diagram, diagrammatic architecture without diagram is shown over here. You can see this. There are four pins where VCC is possible. VCC means uh, your voltage, voltage can be given, 5 volt or 3.3 volt can be given. See, here phone number, uh, actually pins, internal pins are odd number. And outer pins are even number. This is internal pin. These are and outer pins are the odd number pins. Okay, so pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like uh, are present here. Okay, so two and four number pins containing five volts. Whenever I have to supply the voltage to the actuator or sensor, so you have to use these two and four number pins. Or you can use uh, two more pins are there, which contains three point three volt. That is pin number one. And pin number 17 here. 1 and 17. So four voltage pins are there, and the black colored pins are ground. Ground is also required. See. This ground 6, 9, 14, 20, 25, 30, 34, and 100. Like all they are the ground pins. So ground pins, ground is also compulsory. So ground pins have seven pins are there, which are used for ground. And remaining other pins are the GPIO pins, general purpose input output pins. So whenever you take the data as input from the sensor or output to the actuator, we have to use this particular pin. And remember this pin numbers also, these pin numbers I need to use in my programming, in my Python program, pin numbers I have to use. I'll show you how do I use that particular pin number, but this pin diagram is required. So you can find that pin diagram on the uh, Google also. Just go to Google Images. Where you can find GPIO, Raspberry Pi GPIO pin diagram, pin out diagram. And on that, you can see how these pins are present. I'll show you how do I connect that and how to interface with the sensors or how to interface with the actuators also. We'll start with the actuators in three reasons. Yeah. Now, every program that you write in Python for Raspberry Pi can operate, can get operated in two different modes. These modes are GPIO mode and the board mode. Sorry, <laughs> board mode and BCM mode. GPIO board mode and GPIO BCM mode. They are there. So GPIO board option specifies that you are referring, referring to the pins. What are GPIO pins we use? These pins are referring the pin number, physical actual pin number of it. Pin number one, two, three, four, five, six. That actual numbers are used when I'm using the board mode. And second is BCM, which is very commonly is called a Broadcom SOC channel. This internal architecture is like they are connected in a sequence. Their internal sequence is different. That numbers are used when using BCM mode. Like see, GPI over two, GPI over three, four, 17, 27, 22. They are not in sequence. These are the BCM numbers and internal are the board numbers, physical pin numbers are there. Internal ones. 
outer wall only BCM. Okay, 22, 9, 5, 6, 11, 12, 15. These are the BCM pin numbers. So when I'm using board mode, I have to use physical actual pin numbers. And BCM mode, you have to use the GPIO pin numbers there. Fine. This is what the difference is. And in general, developers are using the BCM pin numbers. The Broadcom SSD channel pin numbers, which are present in sequence, not in sequence actually, GPIO pin numbers are used. I'll show you. Now, let's start with the first code. Okay, we have seen Hello World in Python. This is the Hello World in IoT. <laughs> Raspberry Pi based IoT. So, uh, LEDs. <clears throat> LEDs are there. LED is something light emitting diode. Then the current passes through it, it emits the light. That is called as LED. And uh, all our devices, display devices are now present on the LEDs there. Based on the LED series, this is LED. You can find that very small shown over here. Maybe in your uh, slide, it is clearly visible. LED, that is to glow, that is to send the output, generate the output in the form of a light. That's called as LED, correct. And out of this, uh, it contains two different uh, pins there, LED is containing. One is short pin, which is ground, and the long pin can be connected, long length can be connected to the uh, voltage. Okay, so 3.3 volts is sufficient for the LED to connect. And I require another different device, which is called as a breadboard. Okay, so breadboard I'm having with me. So just can see this. So breadboard is required to extend the connection from the uh, Raspberry Pi. So very big breadboard is there. You might be knowing how breadboard is getting operated. See the uh, pins, internal pins. Means if I keep the board like that, so horizontal pins are connected internally. Okay, horizontal pin. If I keep it in vertical fashion. Horizontally, the pins are connected to each other. Okay, the pins from horizontal side, they are connected to each other there. So if I want to extend the connection, I can use this uh, breadboard to extend the connections. This is why the breadboard is required. So breadboard is basically a device. It's like, it's the inverse of your uh, PCB. PCB is final design board, but before PCB, you have to create a skeleton of your architecture. So we require a breadboard for that. This is breadboard that I require. Okay, like that they are horizontally connected when I keep it in a vertical fashion there. Resistor also required, but maybe I, I don't have a resistor right now, but uh, if uh, the current is very high, so to resist that current, resistor may be required. Currently we don't require it and along with that, I may require a few cables, which is what we call as the jumper wires. They are the jumper cables which are shown over there and these jumper cables will help you to jump the connection from Raspberry Pi through the breadboard. That is what the jumper cable does. Okay. So I can use the jumper cables to connect uh, the system, connect your uh, IoT application design to the uh, Raspberry Pi to the breadboard particular. So it's directly to the Raspberry Pi's board is not possible. That's why I'm using these jumper cables to connect the system from uh, the Raspberry Pi to the breadboard. So these are the jumper cables that I'll be using over here. Fine. Now let us continue. Yeah. So the first program, what I say, it's a hello world program of uh, the Raspberry Pi. Or the IoT application design using Raspberry Pi, embedded system design using Raspberry Pi is the uh, hello world code. So I want to blink the LED. I want to blink the LED. So that case, I need to create some connections. Connection, this is a connection. See, I will supply the power to the LED using a program input, using the program. So, uh, for example, I'm connecting my uh, power supply of the LED to some pin number, GPIO 18, six number PNA from outer side. And ground is connected to ground there. Ground pin is ground, directly third pin is ground, where I'm connecting it. And using Python program, I will send high signal to pin number 18. So once I send high signal to pin number 18, the LED will start glowing. The LED will start glowing, that's it, simple as that. See, I'll turn the code also, but I'll show the code currently in my Raspberry Pi there. But before doing that, 
we have to do some set of connections here. This is your Raspberry Pi, or Raspberry Pi there. And these are the pins. As I shown in the pin diagram there, so we need to use the uh, this particular pin, or uh, this jumper cable to connect it there. So I'll just connect the two pins are there. I'll use the uh, red one to connect the ground, okay? And the yellow one to connect the GPIO 18. So whatever GPIO pin numbers are there, that we have to use. So architectural diagram which is present based on that I'm using it. So GPIO pin number 18, I'll connect it with like that. Two pins are there which are chosen, outer pins are there which are chosen there. This one. You can see. I will connect and the second end. I will attach the uh, LED there. Okay, to the LED. So LED can be connected to the Raspberry Pi by using the breadboard here. So on breadboard, I will keep this LED. And same connection I will extend there on it. Okay, so the red one is ground, and the yellow one at the power supply okay. like this this is what the connection i am made okay it is very simple connections are there which are shown there on the diagram so pin to pin gpio pin i have connected to the power cable power connection gpio connected to the power connection and ground i have connected to the ground the ground pin i have connected to the ground over there and you can see the led is now not blinking there because power supply is not there so i want to supply this power from the python program i am keeping it aside my basic connection i have made as i told it is a high level program so just to blink the led so in, in even in arduino also when you start learning arduino so you'll be blinking your led and we'll start with hello world in iot application design using that so this is your hello world program or raspberry pi based out application so i connected that ground to ground and GPIO 18 number pin, I have connected the power cable, power pin, that is long leg of the LED there. And using Python program, I will send the high signal, high, high signal, not high signal, high, means one signal, and that will be the blink the LED, and then we'll see whether it's blinking the LED or not. Let's go to the code. Uh, yeah, here it is. Okay. So first of all, I'll go to programming here, Python 3 idle. And I'll open a new file here. I'll give it as a name, let's use blinkedin, okay, dot p1. Okay, so first thing is that we have to import the libraries. By default in Raspberry Pi, the GPIO libraries of Raspberry Pi are present in it. So I need to import it. Import GPIO RPI dot GPIO as GP. very big number. That's why I'm using the short name there, GPIO. Correct. Then uh, I'll import time library also. Import time. The time means I need to insert delay. I'll show that how to use it. And then I need to save the mode, GPIO dot set mode. So as I told, two modes are there. So GPIO dot BCM, where is Broadcom SPC channel number. And uh, I'll use, okay, this is what the mode you have to set. And now, which pin you have to set as input, which is the output. Now, I have connected LED to pin number 18. So pin number 18 should be set in output, which I'm sending the data to it, correct. Output, I'm sending from Raspberry Pi to that particular pin. Output mode is there. So GPIO dot setup. Pin number 18, I want to send in GPIO dot out mode. 18 number pin, I am setting up as out mode. Because I'm connected to LED. So I need to send one signal, high signal to it. Correct. Then pin number 18, I'm setting output mode. And now here comes the use of while loop. So while true, I'm creating an infinite loop over here, infinite loop, okay. How? So I will send the output, gpio.output, okay. I will send 
the pin number 18 pin number 18 as gpio dot high just a minute sir okay gpio dot high correct so this is 18 number pin uh, i'm using i'm sending it there high and after that i will stop sorry i will sleep for one second means on pin number 18 i want to send high when high means 5 volt power supply power supply will be given to that particular pin there so when the power supply is given already ground is connected led will grow and after one second i'll send the output again pin number 18 gpio dot low time dot sleep again for one second okay see this Very. while true and it will be executed continuously as we have seen it's the infinite loop pin number 18 i am sending high and for one second is will be waiting and pin number 18 again i am sending low again for one second i will be waiting there that's it simple code that is required and i will execute this particular file run module it's showing error RPI. I think uh, something is missing. RPI dot GPIO. Okay. It's a I small here actually. Yeah. So I small. And I'm executing it. Okay, uh, code is running actually. I'll just, when it's made high, I'll print a message. LED is on. Okay. And when it's low, I'll send a message LED is on. Run mode. It's running there. LED is on, LED is off. And you can observe this. This is uh, our code. You can see this. Here is the LED. This is the LED. You can see LED is making on, off, on, off. You can see the output there, and uh, this is the actual output of the code. You can see LED is made on, off. See, getting blown, and the same case. I think it's visible. See, it is making on, mid on, off, on, off, continuously. It's working there. You can see this on, off, on, off. There. This is your hello world program. We can interact with the Raspberry Pi sensors, actuators by using this particular method. And uh, we can send the data. This is all we can, we are sending the data. So I'll be using output function. Of GPIO to send the data from Raspberry Pi to the actuators. But if I wish to send the data or receive the data from the sensors as input, then how to do this one? This is a common device. You can make use of uh, many different ways to have the particular kind of communication there. So let us see how to perform operation. This is the code. You can see I, I, I'll be sharing this code also with you. Okay, so let us see the code. Getting shared actually from that link. No problem. Yeah, see this code. I'll share the presentation. You can try it later also. See, this is the way that we have written the code. Even you can add a buzzer also. I'm, I'm not having a buzzer right now, but uh, in buzzer also it is possible that uh, I can send the data. I mean, output is in the audio format there. Output is in the audio format that uh, you can use. So, piezo buzzer can actually be used for that. You can use it. Now, let's talk about the sensors now. So, many sensors that I have shown there, and I want to read the data from that. Depending upon the kind of sensor, your code will change. 
but in general the sensors which are available with us that can be used uh, in the similar way digital sensors are used similar way like they are generating output in zero and one format binary format only high or low so we can use this particular sensor so for example i am having a sensor with me which is uh, ir sensor this one this one just where we have seen that ir sensor this okay so ir is basically used for uh, one operation i'll show that what's the use usefulness of this infrared sensor is an electronic instrument which is used to sense certain characteristic of its surrounding by either emitting or detecting the infrared radiations so it is used to check that whether radiations are there radiations are present infrared radiations are present or not that can be seen so they are capable of measuring the heat being emitted by object or detecting the motion also these they are used as an obstacle detector obstacle sensors basically so we have two leds present there which are shown over here these two leds okay the above led is transmitter and the below led is a receiver Below is not LED actually. It's a photodiode, and above is the LED, which is transmitter. Now, when it is having an object body in front of it, surface present in front of it, it will get reflection of that LED light there, and it detects that LED light. It identify that there is an obstacle present in front of it. So, when IR receiver receives the data, it finds an obstacle. It doesn't receive any kind of data, so it finds that there is no obstacle present in front of it. that is what ir sensor does so ir is an obstacle detector will check whether any obstacle is present in front of it or not fine this is the use of this so distance calculation also done but it is uh, actually very uh, big structure that we need to create over there something like this almost most of the digital sensor they detect the data in the form of zero and one present not present yes no high low kind of format so they'll be using the ir sensor there see the ir sensor now you can see ir receiver ir uh, emitters are present emitter emits the light an obstacle is there i mean light will be reflected will come back to the ir receiver and there are three different signals present here b g and c sorry b g and o output b we are supplying voltage to the particular uh, sensor there ground is containing a ground obviously every sensor contains a ground out will take the data in zero one obstacle is present out will be zero obstacle not present out will be one or vice versa whatever are there can be detected and every sensor is containing one thing that is a distance adjust potentiometer here pot with the help of with the sensitivity of every sensor every sensor contain every sensor model is containing that sensitivity of the model can be changed With the help of the distance adjust potentiometer, there. distance adjust potentiometer can be used. Fine, that's the IR sensor basically uh, performed. That will perform by the IR sensors here. So let us see how to do this one. Now, almost all digital sensor, if you, when you have seen the IR LED sensor, LDR sensor, sorry, it also does in the same way, same architecture kernel. Only the sensor model is different. This one, see, LDR present here. Here it contains the uh, IR and uh, IR photodiodes, this like one infrared uh, detector and infrared uh, like emitters are there. So even uh, in that uh, moisture sensor also, the similar kind of structures are present. Only the front sensor model will be different. Remaining others are are same. So they will be used almost in the same way over there. Okay, so they will be connected in this particular way. I'll collect it just a minute. Okay, so let us see this. Just a minute. I'll just connect uh, the IR sensor. You can see this. This is how the connections are made over there. I'm not using LED now. I'll show how to connect the IR sensor. So, IR sensor, not only IR, almost every kind of sensor is containing uh, three different kind of uh, input. Three different kind of pins are there, and these three pins are data. That is GPIO 18. I am using there data pin. The second pin is uh, the ground pin, and the third pin is the voltage pin. Now see, three pins I am I am having here with me. The same pin structure I am using over there. So 
So I'll be using the data pin. So let us see that. The architecture which is shown over there is the same way I'm using it there. The green pin I have connected to the data, which is out pin. Okay. Red pin is ground. And uh, the 18 number pin I have connected to VCC. Orange. And I'll show you how exactly uh, it will detect it. Out pin. The green one. Same structure I'm creating using the architecture diagram here. Some time. Let me see the architecture of it. Check the architecture diagram. So the structure I have created and let's see the program now. So whenever you write a program for the sensor, the same architecture I've just formed over here, here you can see the Raspberry Pi is present. Uh, just in one two, just clear all the pins from there. Maybe it will be required for that. Cleanup is expected, so cleanup is not done. That's why it's showing some required error. Copy it. Cleanup is in the sense that whatever data is present on that particular pins, you have to clean it there. It was not cleaned. I was from the error there. Still, it's not getting cleaned. the code key.
so uh, what exactly we are doing over here we are getting the data okay uh, from the sensors that is i'm using the input device input function over here and with the help of this input function we are getting the inputs from the sensors particularly so the sensor i need to just connect to put it there and uh, after that if that data if it is containing zero or one so based on that zero or one will define whether the sensor is detecting this entity or not detecting the entity or not just wait a minute and just reconnect it again 